Good afternoon and welcome to Scottish Geography. Today we're going to have a look at what is involved in the Higher Geography course for Scottish Geography and meeting the SQA standards. I'm going to keep, try and keep as many videos as possible to six minutes, therefore we have a lot to talk about. Let's get started. Higher Geography 2020-2021. What do you need to know? And this is as much as we still know. This is based on what we've done for the previous years. This could all change given the unprecedented situation we actually find ourselves in. But at least to make a start, this is what we're looking at. So assessment wise, you have two exam papers. Paper one is physical and human environment and is worth 100 marks. Paper two is global issues and geographical skills and is worth 60 marks. There'll be more detail about this come out later in terms of the times and what's involved in each question. Also, we have an assignment. We've got one assignment to do, which is 30 marks, but is double weighted. So effectively, if you think of the paper one as having 100 marks, assignment is actually worth 60 marks. So it's 27% of your grade, whereas your main exam is 73% of your grade. Changes from National 5. So more straightforward to get marks. Although questions can be a lot broader and a lot more specific, marks can range from 4 to 20 marks and anything in between that. Command words, we have some new ones. So we have discuss and evaluate, although there is no limitation in the command words that can be used in higher geography. There's, only, there's not an exhaustive list, so you do have to be able to have a lot of practice at working out what the questions want you to do. The assignment is a lot more detailed in terms of your evaluation and discussion about your research methods, what that means for the overall project, but with assignment, a lot more detail about that in the future. So part one, physical geography. It's four sections. Hydrosphere is about the formation of river features, hydrological cycle and drainage basins, and flood hydrographs. Lithosphere is erosional and depositional features of glaciated landscapes and coastal landscapes. So some of these you'll have done before, but some of them will be brand new to you, and we'll be doing the old ones in more depth about what actually happens when each one forms. Biosphere contains the characteristics and formation of different soil types, why that's important and why that's relevant. And then our final physical topic is atmosphere, looking at the global heat budget, how energy is transferred across our planet from the equator to the poles and back, how ocean currents move, and something called the ITCZ or the Intertropical Convergence Zone, what characteristics it has and how it affects people that live nearby it. Part two is human geography. Human geography is made up of population, so this is moving on completely from what we looked at in National 5. And methods and, and problems of data collection is involved now. How we actually get that information. The con consequences of population change. So what happens if we've got a rapidly growing or a slowly declining population. And voluntary and forced migration. The consequences of if a war starts somewhere and people need to move because of that. Or if there's a large amount of people choosing to move to a different location for different reasons. The reasons that these happen and what happens when they get there, because it's not always nice. Rural includes, is a brand new section called rural land degradation. What causes it and the effects and solutions. We look at a case study in the Sahel, but there is other places in the world that this happens. Land use conflicts in a glaciated or coastal location. Previously in National 5, this was part of the physical geography topic, but is now looking more at the human interactions between people, how these conflicts are managed and how effectively they're managed. And urban, traffic changes and management, housing changes and management in both the developed and developing countries. So where do these happen? How do they occur? And what is happening for traffic and housing in both of these locations? Part three is our global issues. So you have the choice of two from four different topics. So you could study river basin management, global climate change, development health, and energy. The main ones I teach are global climate change, which is the causes, impacts, and solutions of global climate change around the world, and development health. This is where you have to understand the developments of countries and the variations between different countries, how they've developed differently. The cause, impact and strategy of one water related disease, normally malaria, but you can also look at cholera or any other water related disease, and primary healthcare strategies. 
What are these? How have they been implemented? And how do they benefit people in developing countries? And our final part is geographical skills. This is using your geographical knowledge to tackle a problem and evaluate the suitability of a site and exploring the impacts of this development. So look in here, it would be like, where is a good location to build a new housing development? Or is this dismantled railway, is it good to re build it into a new railway system? So you answer these questions and then we'll look at how they form. So that's a higher geography course. Um, that's everything involved in it and we there is more information available at the SQA which is the link below and some really good textbooks which are linked below. Stuff like the Likey and Likey one. Um, the higher course as mentioned has changed recently so the Likey and Likey one isn't it's just brand new out. Um, Hodder Gibson one there um, is also relatively new out and is actually quite a nice den condensed one. Um, so that's ones we're looking at. BBC Bite Size has also got really good resources and Bright Red has a really good digital section as well. So have a look at them for more information and we'll see you later.